In this video, I want to introduce you to an SV4.NET solution. SV4.NET solution is an easy way to create, update, and deploy services directly in code. It is a simple library that helps you embed virtual services in code. Just add the library to your IDE and configure virtual services in your code. This solution has the ability to integrate with any unit tests. You can create services through request response pairs, request response zip files, or specification files like Swagger or Wizzle. The solution also supports the virtual service image and virtual service model files. Both DevTest and BlazeMeter platforms are supported, and so are secure endpoints. Now let's take a look at the configuration steps. First, create your AnyUnit test project. Once you have the project, you can download and add dependencies, which are the sv4.net library and the config files corresponding to service virtualization, blazemeter, and login. In addition, there are a few other dependencies. These can also be added through NuGet packages. Once all dependencies are configured, you can add the setup method to load the configuration. This configuration will then be used in the methods to create, update and delete virtual services as needed. Let's take a look at the demonstration of the SV4.NET solution. This is an AnyUnit test application, PetStore test, a sample .NET application that is already configured. This will help us test the PetStore application. I have an endpoint and the different methods that help me test the find pets by status through different inputs. The problem that we can run into when running the unit tests is that more often than not, the service or the dependencies are not available for you to do unit tests. In such scenarios, developers typically resort to hard coding values changing the library and so on, which is not a clean approach. Through this solution, you'll be able to create services on the fly within your unit tests by writing code and correspondingly use the virtual services that get generated in your test. This way, you don't have to tweak your application code, which is the right approach. Let's quickly run the test here just to show that at the moment, the API is not functional and we are currently getting an exception and the tests are failing. Let's configure the SV4.NET solution in this AnyUnit test. So the first step is to configure the SV4.NET library. Let's add a reference to that library. The dependency is added. Next step is to add the config files. So click Add, Existing Item, select all the config files, and click Add. We also want to make sure that when the build is done, the file gets copied. So for the Copy to Output Directory option, I will select Copy if newer from the drop-down list for all the config files. Now we have added the config files and the library. As mentioned before, there are some additional dependencies to configure. And we will add these through NuGet by clicking Manage NuGet Packages. The first one is Authenticated Encryption, so I will search for it and click Install, then repeat for Log4Net, newtonsoft.json and system.configuration.configurationManager. Now we have all the dependencies configured, so the next step is to add the setup method. The setup method is basically where we will read the config and in addition also the username and password which is the service virtualization specific username and password. We will pass these into the method to create, update or delete a virtual service. 
So here we have the ability to directly pass the config name that you like to use and also to pass the config name runtime through the run settings file where you will read the parameter name that you define in your run settings and that will give you the value. Or you can even pass it directly as a string. In this demo, let's pass it directly as a string. So since we are using service virtualization for the demo, we are using sv.config and passing the name of the parameter. The next step is to add the method to create services. In this case, we are doing a one-time setup where the service is created before we run any tests. Let's add the method here. This is a create method and a zip file to create the service. This zip file has the request response that we want to use to create the service. Now we have the method, but you might ask, where have we defined how the service will get created? This is the part that is in the config file. You can see there is a create section. So this is what gets used when you want to create. And here you can define the port and the description that you want to use. For example, we can change the description to pet store service. And then you can define the port, the transport and data protocol settings that you would like to use for the creation. Once you've done the changes as needed, the next step is to run. Before you run the test, when you run this setup, it will create the service and you have defined the service we created, the config, on the port 8001. In addition, you can also define to use a particular VSE hostname and the VSE name. So once the service gets created, it will be deployed to this particular host on port 8001. Now we will update the URL to the virtual service endpoint. Once the service gets generated, the test that follows will start using this virtual service endpoint. Now let's run the test. As you can see, the test is successful. So what is happening in the background? The service got created and deployed with the file that was provided as an input and then the service was used in the unit test. After logging into DevTest, you can see that the demo service zip got created on port 8001 as was defined. And for the two different methods that we are testing, two transactions went in. So now we know that the unit test uses the virtual service endpoint and that it was successful because the service was available. Optionally, after the tests are done, you can also delete the service. You would just change the create to delete. And for delete, you don't need to pass any input. So this way you are deleting a particular service. Next time you run, once the tests are successful, the service will be deleted. This concludes our quick demo. Feel free to explore and try out different combinations of methods. We hope that you found this demonstration useful. Thank you for watching.